What's up, everyone? It's Purple Haze here with another episode of Purple Shade. And not only is it another episode of Purple Shade, it's another episode where I'm talking about this Microsoft Activision deal. And before I talked about the Microsoft Activision deal from the Activision side and why I thought this deal was on shaky ground, but this time I'm going to talk about it from the regulator side and why I think this deal is even on even more shaky ground. And before anybody gets to me, but purple, but purple, the CMA said, look, this is coming after the CMA said what they said. And actually, I'm going to hint at something or not hint at it, but say exactly what the CMA said. Well, not exactly, but you know what? So what did the CMA say? Well, the CMA basically said that, hey, we're walking back our comments about this deal being anti-competitive for the console market. But what they also said is they said, we still have some anti-competitive concerns around the cloud gaming market. And more particularly, this is coming after Microsoft already made concessions to quote unquote, cloud gaming competitors. So why do I think that's really strange? Well, I don't want to focus on the CMA for this. I actually want to focus on another regulatory body that people seem to just forget about, but I think has the potential to make a lot more noise than people think. And that's the FTC. You see, the FTC had another court case recently with another big tech company in their acquisition. And even though the FTC lost that court case, a lot of people think that potentially the judge laid out the groundwork for the FTC to win a similar case, meaning the Microsoft Activision deal case. And so without further ado, I want us to review the meta within acquisition that recently back in February, the FTC lost. But more importantly, I wanna look at the similarities of that deal, the differences and what the judge actually told the FTC and what they told meta. So. For everybody who's like, well, there's no prior court precedent for this, the FTC doesn't have the teeth. I think the administrative law judge just said the FTC actually has sound logic to bring a court case for someone who's trying to purchase something in their own respective uh, gaming software market. So they said there's precedent for that. Then he also said the FTC can look at the future competition for said markets. So with Meta, Meta, let's think about what Meta was actually trying to do. Meta was trying to buy within a virtual reality health startup company to aid in its Oculus virtual reality ecosystem. So let's think about that. It's a nascent market, it's a big tech company. Meta's already kind of the leader in VR. So these deals are really similar. Well, purple, that means the FTC is gonna lose their case against Microsoft Activision, perhaps, except for one key thing. You see, the judge in that case said the reason Meta will win is because Meta doesn't have the capacity to build a health and fitness app, meaning they don't have the where they don't have the organicness. They've never tried to create a Peloton, basically, because that's what Within's competition is. It's like a Peloton. So the judge said because they don't have a Peloton, they've never tried to build a Peloton. They don't have that expertise in house it's okay for them to go purchase that. So now let's look at the Activision Blizzard deal in Microsoft. Well, instead of virtual reality, we're talking cloud. So these kind of like cancel each other out because they're similar size markets. They're both looking at the future. We already talked about they're both like big tech companies, but here's the key difference. You see, Activision Blizzard has a first person shooter that you may know as Call of Duty. And what does Microsoft actually have? They actually have a Call of Duty competitor. Yes, it's in space or some far off planet, but at the end of the day, it's still considered a top tier first person, first person shooter in Halo. And so what Microsoft actually and Xbox built their brand around, first person shooters, might come back and haunt them based upon what the judge in that case said for this case. Now, what's really interesting is it's actually the same FTC that's trying both cases. And it's the same judge that's going to oversee both cases. So to think that the FTC is not going to bring up this argument is ludicrous. But more importantly, do I think the FTC is going to win in the long run? I don't necessarily know. But my whole argument has basically been about if this deal 
goes past the expiration deal date for the deal, which is mid-July, the deal has to be renegotiated. And I've always thought in the renegotiation of the deal, that's when things fall apart. Whether that's they need to get rid of Activision or they need to get rid of Call of Duty, whether that's what is the now the price of the deal, right? Both Microsoft can say we're gonna Microsoft can say they're gonna offer less. Activision Blizzard could say they're gonna they want more. My Activision Blizzard already gets $3 billion if the deal doesn't go through. There are numerous angles to look at this that says the longer this goes on, the more threat the deal is to fall through. And as I said before in the earlier part of this video, I think this is actually really, really concerning. Because now you have the CMA talking about cloud gaming. You have the FTC talking about cloud gaming. You can almost guarantee that those two are sharing notes with each other and they're really honing in on their argument that can withstand scrutiny in court. And now you have the FTC that can now go back and quote the judge in the former meta case to aid them in the Microsoft Activision deal case. But if you want to get more information about that case, I link down below this amazing article that really talks about it, that really breaks down that case. Um, but again, do I think this still goes through? I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence that it's not gonna throw go through. And when I say I'm on the fence, I actually really don't think it's gonna go through. But to further prove my argument, I may talk about this from the Microsoft side of things and why I don't think Microsoft doesn't want this deal to go through. Not Xbox, but Microsoft. But that'll be another date, maybe next month sometime. Until then, I'll let people get excited. But as always, you know, I don't care where you game, how you game, why you game, when you game, what you game on. As long as you're gaming, you are good with me. And as always, this is Purple Haze. The proof is in the plane. Thank you all for watching. Please let me know what you think. Like and comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts. But what do you think? All right. With that, later. Sorry, seven minutes. Peace.